Here's to getting back together. To planned lunches and unplanned cookouts. To grandma's recipes and smells that take us back. To passing down plates and traditions. Here's to warm embraces and familiar faces. To your best friends becoming best friends. To scheming, dreaming, and food still steaming. Here's to laughter and love. To growing closer than ever. For all of life's get-togethers. Chinette, here's to us. Hi, it's John Taffer from Bar Rescue. Did you know the second building in America was a tavern? When I built my new restaurant franchise concept, Taffer's Tavern, I thought back to the roots of what makes a tavern a tavern. Timeless character. All while delivering an unbelievably delicious food and beverage experience. That paired with my 40 plus years in the industry provides a clear roadmap to success. Do you have what it takes to be a Taffer's Tavern franchisee? If so, I'd love to hear from you. Visit franchise.tafferstavern.com. Hey, everyone. This is the Almost World Podcast. Bringing to you mind-blowing interviews with guests from all over the world. So settle down, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh yeah, by the way, if you like the podcast, please support Elmo's World Podcast on Patreon. Your support is what helps the podcast improve more and more. Welcome to Almost World Podcast. This is Almo, and I'm with my awesome friend Tobin at Templeman. Hey, man, uh, can you introduce yourself? My name is uh, Tobin Templeman, and uh, I'm a musician. I also like to uh, make different pieces of art, and um, I enjoy conversation. And so, Tobin, I, I, I can see in your profile that you are an op- openly, you know, atheist. And can you tell us, tell me more about how you you got into that point where you're in your life where you you've decided that there is in fact no God, or maybe you could tell, be more specific about your journey from your childhood to today. Right on. Yeah. Um. How I got to to be an, an open atheist is uh. Well, I live in Texas. To give you a little bit of a, a regional, where I'm coming from. Um. So. Christianity has a very big voice here. There's plenty of people that uh, just assume right off the bat that I'm a believer and, you know, and it doesn't really uh, like anger me or anything like that, but I just, I kind of think it's silly. I kind of laugh about it. I'm like, you automatically think that, that I'm a Christian. And uh, I've been a non-believer for a long time. And whenever I start having conversations with people uh, and it gets to, you know, do you believe in God? Uh, Those are the kind of conversations I've always really enjoyed having with people. Um, And I started uh, back... um, about six years ago i started uh thinking about the theology and and you know religion and stuff i started became more curious about that topic and i came across the atheist experience and um then i found a whole bunch of other uh people who were openly out atheists and i was like wow you know this is this is my group of people. These are people who are very similar in, in their thoughts about what they think about uh, religion. And uh, now I'm an open atheist because I see the the need to have an opposition against uh, Christian nationalism because they are actually, they have an agenda and they're pushing it and they're trying to make changes in our government and they're trying to make things forced on us basically. And um, 
there needs to be an opposition against them and to let them know, hey, that that's that's not going to work for us. I see. I'd like to see more of a a, a balance. So uh, I've noticed uh, that you, the atheist experience, you know, that show with Matt Delahanty, and yeah, it's, it must have been very influential for you. Was it the the stepping stone, like the first step towards being openly an atheist, or did you have other activities where you already started and that, but the that show basically, uh, you know, sealed the deal for you. The atheist experience uh really started to give me a whole new set of terminology uh to really express how i think um there are many good thinkers that are part of the uh austin community of atheists um that i really enjoy um but um my I've always been a non-believer, you know, well, since I was like 13 in my early teens, and I liked having those conversations, but I didn't really know that there was like, you know, there needs to be people who are openly um, saying, hey, I, I, I'm not, I'm a non-believer. I want to help normalize uh, atheism you know in a positive manner you know give us you know a, a positive outlook you know if not positive you know look at us like neutral you know we're just other human beings we're not these uh hateful narcissistic people who hate life and stuff like that you know we're just regular everyday people I enjoy life. I, 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 I'm glad to be here, <laughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. but see. in my music, my music has always kind of, uh, spoke about these kind of ideas. There's always been kind of like a message about, uh, you know, I, I don't think that this adds up. I don't, I don't think there's, these God claims, I don't really, uh, I don't, I'm not convinced by this stuff. Uh, on, on, on the other end, you also mentioned the, the being on the opposition against these, uh, you know, God believing nationalists that you mentioned, right? Uh, can you tell me more as to why you feel that this sort of, you know, re this the religious group in America should be opposed and why, why there should be a balance? Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. Um, re recent current events, uh, if we look at Arizona, Arizona uh, had, they give invocations at the beginning of these meetings, and they are telling the uh, people who are part of the satanic temple that they can't give an invocation and they're illegitimate, but really, uh, there needs to be an inclusive, I would like to see an inclusive government, you know, we're all, if you're an American, that should be the only qualifier to, you know, take part in the government and, you know, Christians should not be the only ones who get to say their piece. And then you get over here in Texas and our, our, uh, our, uh, Greg Abbott has just, uh, made it a very small window for women to have the chance to be able to have an abortion. And, um, I think women should be able to have that choice, you know, and it's now been signed in to where not it, they have six weeks. And for a woman, that is, you know, that's a pretty small window, 
you know, there, there's women who have been caring, been with a child, and just did not uh, have the signs of, hey, you're pregnant, and they go further than that whole six-week period. There's, there's going to be a lot of women who fall outside of that six-week period just because they, they don't know. And that's why there needs to be an opposition against them because they're going to make the quality of life um, not of quality. It's going to be, uh, you know, forceful. You know, they're forcing women to have children. They're forcing us to hear their invocations inside of the the meetings and stuff like that which is um it's just it's not right i don't see it as being right it is wrong all right that's interesting i know you uh, you yourself you know you have a moral standpoint of what is right and wrong right and mm-hmm. uh that's completely understandable okay but, all right so let's talk about um the last thing you mentioned earlier was that uh, you you're just not convinced of these god claims and you must have uh, had a lot of discussions already about this right and then you eventually concluded for yourself that well I'm just not convinced of any evidence of a God, right? Yeah. And can you tell me, so let's talk about this. Uh, can you tell me why you don't believe in God? The, the biggest one is, is, as far as God is concerned, all that I hear and all that I see are just arguments for God and people pointing to scriptures. And none of those things are a God. And I just, I can't see one. I cannot interact with one. Even though I've been told over and over again by people, oh, you just need to pray harder. You just need to sit down and read your Bible more. And uh, I honestly, whenever I'm told these things, I will do it. I, I I still will give prayer a shot. Let's see if it works. But uh, I, I haven't seen any evidence of any kind of uh, interaction with my prayers or reading the Bible just makes me go, wow, this stuff is just outdated thought. It's just old thought and it's just ancient text. That's all it is. I find it useless. In my everyday life, it doesn't help me at all. Whenever I want to construct something, build it, the last thing that is on my mind is maybe I should consult my Bible and find out how I should build this or make this or how should I treat this person. It's useless for that. It doesn't do anything for me. It's interesting. I see. Well, I you could I could make the same argument yeah, that the Bible is very useful to a bi- like billions of people out there in the world, right? But of course, if it's by your own standard, it's not useful for you, right? But it's so in this case, though, if you you mentioned an analogy of using the Bible for maybe building something. Mm-hmm. But is the Bible meant to be, for help you build something? Maybe about treating people that it could help you with that as well. But, um, so is this your main argument that, you know, just by reading the text, you've concluded for yourself that the Bible is just ancient scripture and it's just, you know, written by some some people back in, back in old times. And then that's it. It's nothing special about it. Is that what you can? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's no use for it whenever it comes to uh, morality and you know wanting to have discussions about that you know i like to start off with well-being you know and if i can agree with people that you know whoever i'm having the discussion with that well-being is 
you know, the foundation, you know, we can discuss all kinds of top, you know, or situations that we run into every day and, you know, what is right and wrong. You know, those discussions can be had and it, it you don't even have to acknowledge the Bible at all. There's, there's ways to, mm. to discuss those topics. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned well-being a, a, a lot. Can you tell me uh, what what do you mean by well-being, and what is your standard of well-being? Well-being is uh, is a person who is you know fully functional to their capabilities, and uh, their needs are are met. And I'd even go as far as say what they want is being met so is well-being the same for every person that uh, you know like for example um and should we per, uh, like should humanity pursue like individual well-being or like a collective well-being it, it, what, what, can you tell me more it goes beyond just uh you and me and the whole society i would say as far as, as the well-being for every person to every creature, to our planet, and to the distant universe, we should consider the well-being of it. I, I, you know, I may not be here in a hundred years, but most likely there will be others who come after us, and uh, I would wish for them that they could, you know, be able to enjoy their experience you know i i wish it to be true that we don't destroy it and make it worse for those who come after us mm -hmm. and so you know in in this sense though when you say well-being right uh, you, you are sort of mentioning like you know the maximum health and happiness for every uh, living thing Right, so, well, you're not talking about a a rock here, right? You're the like you don't we really don't care about the well being of a rock or 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 non living things. Is is by your definition? Do we have to take uh to consider their well being as well? Oh yeah, I'm. I would consider the well being of our planet as well into into that. Um, how we treat that? I mean, down to the insects that are around us um mm. of course I, i'm not going to let an infestation happen inside of my home but i'm also uh if i'm out in nature if i see a spider web that's in my path i might go around it and let him or you know let the spider have its space uh i don't just kill animals uh, the only time I've ever killed an animal or fish is because I needed something to eat. Uh, partially, I'm kind of on off. Uh, so uh, when you say the well-being of the planet, um, I, I'm I'm confused here. So you mean like the well-being of like the 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 non-living earth yes right like the magma mm -hmm. the the core mm -hmm. the everything that's not living that you also consider its well-being yes interesting it should be allowed to be able to function properly without us totally polluting it mm -hmm. so do you think that the the, uh, the earth cares if it's being oh, polluted no. or not no no, it's, it's, it has no personage. Yeah. So, uh, so why, so why does it matter though for the Earth's uh, um, well-being? Like, uh, the, the, I, 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 it seems to me that uh, you know it, the Earth is actually uh, doesn't really care about this. There, there is no, we can, there's an absence, of course, because it's the, the, the yeah, it's not, it doesn't have a consciousness. So, uh, so. Do you mean like we we should care about the Earth because of the well-being of the, of every living thing that's on the Earth, not the Earth's well-being itself? Well, the Earth 
itself is what sustains us. If if our earth, its well being is not being considered, eventually it's going to affect humans and the rest of the animals. You know, it, it uh, out in West Texas, you cannot drink the groundwater which you used to be able to. You used to be able to dig a hole deep enough and you could hit uh, groundwater below and you used to be able to drink from there. But now we have polluted it so much, it's not only affecting us, it's also affecting the other animals and creatures. So the well-being of the earth, to me, should be considered because it is what sustains us. It is what... uh, gives us the nutrition and uh, it's our home so uh what one thing though i, I want to ask you what like uh, when you mentioned the earth's well-being like what would be the perfect state of the earth's well-being mm. right like let's go back like six billion years ago uh the earth was still in, in its formation right it was st- sort of like uh just a big asteroid being you know constantly you know <laughs> Being, uh, being molded into a perfect sphere, right? Because of the constant asteroids hitting it. So would that state be less of a well-being than it is now? Or maybe in the future when it explodes or something, when the sun, the, you know, dis- destroys itself? Like, the, mm. does the, the, what do you mean by a well, Earth's well-being? It, the, it is uh, functioning really, uh, uh, you know, it, it's going to go through its natural cycles and you know, there's not a whole lot that we can do about it. Surely there's nothing I can actually do about it. Um, But in our everyday, the, the businesses that we run and things like that, uh, our pollution and our effect, on um the earth uh it may not care about it but it in it's what is giving us our nutrition it is what is uh giving us our place to be i I guess yeah but you know i I guess i i would grant you that um uh, as human beings you know as a a civil human uh, global civilization we should be concerned about the how we we, in, we you know we influence the earth's conditions for as a as a biosystem you know we're, we're an environment where we survive in right of course the earth doesn't care you know it's just a, it's just it's just a thing right non living thing but uh, every living thing on it cares uh, cares about the, the state that the earth is in right and, and the, of course it matters so uh, uh, so. I would ask you though. Um, so, other than the non-living things, how about the li- the the smallest living things? Let's say a worm, right? Uh, th- w- would you consider a, a, a worm's well-being? Oh, I do. Actually, I uh, whenever it rains really hard over here, they surface to the ground, and I will uh, pick them up. And I go and I put them in my compost pile and I let them live in there. And I, I put them also in my uh, flower gardens and things like that because they are going to uh, make my flowers have nice, good soil. Um, and they also help break down my compost. Okay, well, so in terms of how about human well-being then, right? Um, to you, what would be the most perfect state of, of a human being having the you know most ideal well-being right would it be like for example for me would it be like oh i would become like super like a billionaire and have all everything i want or mm. what or, or maybe i just live in like a in a perfect utopian society where every, everyone is equal and then you know that we have no greed and, and corruption whatsoever or, or can you define for me what the per, uh, what a perfect well-being for humanity looks like perfect well-being 
for a human would be that all of its basic needs are met where you have uh, access to food, to water, to where uh, you're able to fully function, you're able to have uh, joy, you're able to uh, investigate your uh, curiosities, to follow your passions, um, well-being for a person uh, could also be like things that they want, but it, it is not necessary for a person to have a billion dollars to have well-being. Um, I consider myself, I have well-being at this moment. Like um, I, my needs, just about, um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's perfect. I, I do have things that are like everyday obstacles. What would make it perfect? Uh, I will be done with the building project that I'm working on and I would have full functioning of my bathroom. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's that's really close to uh, your perfect well-being. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, man. And uh, okay, uh, so it means to say, if you know that um, that a lot of rich people already have uh, perfect well-being by your definition, because a lot of their basic needs are already met. Oh, right. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. but does that mean that they're happy though? You know, if let's say that I am a rich person, right? I I have everything I need. I need, but do I have everything I want? Right, because it's in our nature to want things that we don't have, and it's endless. Yeah, you know, and and that's why I kind of hesitate whenever I say uh, our what we want, like what we need, is it like I haven't found any reasons why uh, a per a person's needs should not be met, and that would constitute well-being but whenever it goes into wants you know that's that's where it gets kind of like uh like is it necessary for you to have your 10th mercedes benz or you know i think whenever you start affecting other people's well-being because of what you want, what a person wants, I think that's whenever you start crossing a line of where you're just being inconsiderate. And what you if, are being, yeah. What if what if your uh, what if what if your needs start crossing the line of others people other people's needs you know let's say that you're in you're in a we're in a society where there's scarcity in food right you you it's either you feed your family or you give it to the another family right there's only there's a, there's only few food enough for your family would you give it to them would you slice it in half well then you need it right to have to have perfect well-being i would like to think that I would be the type of person who would split my food with the other family and that way we could collaborate and work together to make more food or find more food. Um, working together, uh, it, it, you know, it helps achieve well it feels like we've waited 360 fix times two for this year plenty of time to rethink your grand entrance in you enter they think you're going in for a bear hug you run for it secretly slipping a holiday scratcher in both back pockets boom that entrance would be money like top prizes ranging from 500 to five hundred thousand dollars play along with holiday scratchers from the virginia lottery at a retailer near you for odds and more information, visit VALottery.com. 
The skills and credentials you need for the career you want are within reach at University of Maryland Global Campus. In accredited state university, UMGC offers online courses, personalized advising, lifetime career services, and more. Visit umgc.edu slash podcast. B, if we're all working together. But yeah, you could have, if you know, if you did have the food, you could have already had the perfect well-being, right? But you decided to, to gave it to split it in half. But and that, that means that you you didn't have perfect well-being when you split it, right? Because if it's only just the fulfillment of needs, so but what is it? What is well-being really? Uh, you know, it, by your definition, um. How about this? Like a, a good example would be, um, let's say that um, you know you're in you're in a, a, you're in a box where everything that you need is already there, right? Uh, it, you you have virtual reality, you have unlimited food in that box, and you know you are locked up in that box, but you have oxygen. You know you have everything that you need: food, water, everything. Would you have perfect well-being then? And you know you could live forever in that box. And, and, and would I have other people inside of that box? Or it would well, just, you you would have the illusion of of being. Or you, you you don't when you're in that box, you don't really know if you're in a box or not. You're just you're not aware of it. That that would uh. That to me, I don't know if that would be like the. I'm fairly confident that there is a need for us to be to achieve mental well-being to to be healthy mentally mm -hmm. that human interaction is important. I think it would be partially met because you you could have virtual reality and you could still kind of have relationships and talk to something Mm -hmm. But I don't think the need would be completely met without being able to, to like really reach out and, and like hug somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, like, let's say like the illusion is like a perfect matrix, right? It's uh, the artificial intelligence really produces the exact no something no different from what you could the stimuli what you could get from real human beings. You know, and you have would have no way to determine whether or not it's real or, or fake. So, so in that case, um, you know, in terms of like how a solipsist would look at it, at a reality, you know, you can't really tell, but you had you, know, you would just have faith that other people are in fact real, like as much as you you believe that I'm I'm real. You know, you don't know, you can't really know for certain, right? But you have faith in it, so. And, and so would do if you're in that box, right? And you have everything that you need there already given. So that would that mean that you have perfect well-being there? I think, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. You basically painted a, a hypothetical in which, yeah, you, you would have all your needs met, and you'd be able to socially interact. At that point, yeah, you mm -hmm. you would have your Mm -hmm. So at one point in the future, well yeah, in in our in our reality here, you know, we are we do live in a scarce universe. Do do you think it would be right to have every human being just put in the in a perfect box where everything they need, you know, in a hypothetical box that could possibly could exist? Is it would you would it be okay to put them there and to have, for them to have perfect well being? Ah, uh, but it it. It would have to be something that that person would want for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you yeah. if you know that if you're trying to force me into a box, mm -hmm. you will get a fight out of me. I have I have <laughs> fought for that. Yeah. If you try to put me in a box, I will retaliate. Mm -hmm. It will happen. Mm -hmm. But if I chose to be and others were choosing to be, then mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. What if, what if, yeah, what if like uh, from, uh, you know, if let's say the government did it and they, they 
made it for like from a fatherly perspective, you know, that, you know, this child that I'm, that doesn't know what's good for him, you know, it's either he suffers in the real world or we put him in this perfect box where everything he needs is done there. So uh, he could have like the blue pill where he's not aware that he was put in the box and he can live his life perfectly and live in perfect well-being by your definition. Right, that that they could do that. So you don't. There's so the, the choice was never really given to you, and so it the, it's not really a thing that that you can you know that that uh, manifest in in the system that that would make it uh, wrong, right? But uh, of course, you know this is a huge topic, and I I get your point there, right? Of course. Uh, so other than well being, I want to discuss uh, what what you think about religion, man. Can you tell me? Uh, right now there are billions of people believing that there is a God. Why do you think this this is still the case? Because it is so ingrained it, it well it is a learned behavior and it just keeps on the knowledge of those ideas just keeps on getting passed down and uh, that's what perpetuates it it's it, it's all about where you came from who were your parents and uh what was your environment like and that is what's perpetuating these ideas into our future um like uh if you don't teach your kids about it then they grow up and it's not really a big deal it's, there's no issue it's not like your kid grows up and is like I have a giant sized God hole in my heart and I need something to fill it. Give me some Jesus. It just, that doesn't happen. I, I guess so. But it depends though. There are a lot of stories as well. You know, people, had, uh, people who were raised atheists, right. And they came into the faith. I have come across some of them, but uh, yeah, I see your point, right. The most, uh, a lot of, you know, if you we talk about like cults, especially cults, right oh, yeah. uh they're indoctrinated into it and i would agree right that uh that how they came into the faith that they have is is uh very wrong you know and in, in, in a lot of them it's forced on them so uh, you know as a society what do you think should be done here you know in the name of freedom of religion like should the government interfere with how parents teach or what parents teach to their children in terms of faith man you're hitting a good topic right there this is a good one right here. yeah 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 uh at what point should we interject ourselves into other people's business so what do you that think man really good uh you know uh i don't have my thoughts fully organized let, let's let's on break it down one. let me yeah, let, let me let's let play me with say, it. yeah let me say uh take, say, take my point on it um uh, in my country right there is this uh, big cult of filipinos who millions of them who believe that the, there's this pastor who came out and said that he's the appointed son of god and like literally like jesus come down on earth and they give him like a lot of their money every every Sunday. And I would say that this is a fucking cult, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I, I I loathe this type of indoctrination and foolishness. And you know, I, I, I'm a I'm a person of faith, of course, but um if I see these this type of 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 thing happening like should the government interfere because it's so obvious that he's not what he's claiming to be he's a, he's a real scam obvious you know in the uh, most obvious sense so uh um well in the we're a dem democracy you know people choose to believe in him freely you know he's not forcing them but so 
I'd say that you know, as a democracy, well, well we're, there's really nothing we can do. But in, if he, if he were to be in a place like China, for example, well, he he won't be able to do to be able to uh, do stuff like that because the the government would be on his ass immediately. You know, <laughs> but the, I mean the communist government. So so in this case, like. Um, should the government have this sort of dictatorial uh, power over people, what, what people, what people should believe? Because a lot of people are stupid, and I, I'm not afraid to say that. You know, I'm, I'm based, <laughs> and and so a, a lot of them need need help. But uh, should should the government be able to to be like get? I think you know, yeah. I think uh, right right here, uh, it starts crossing a line whenever you are harming others. And if you're a cult and you are absolutely objectively hurting people and children then yeah, the government should step in at that point. It's no different than domestic. It turns into actions. Um, and then you have people who are like snake oil salesmen who are selling stuff for ridiculous prices uh, and they're promising, you know, these... Uh, um, I think his name is Jim Baker. He's selling uh, colloidal silver, and he and that is not true. At that point, yes, there should be the allowance of the government to step in and be like, "No, you are practicing bad business, and uh, you need to, you know, this cannot go on." You know, I think I think that is definitely there is a, a point where, yes, people should be allowed to believe what it is that they believe. I'm not going to try to force my beliefs or how I think onto others. Um, and in that same regard, neither should other people. I, I, I'm actually a very uh i like the idea of liberty they want over there i get to do what i want over here they can't tell me what to do i don't tell them what to do it's a mutual respect but as soon as you start crossing that line and you're now harming other people that's whenever you've crossed the line and now yeah there should be allowance for somebody to step in and be like hey no yeah knock that off by the way bro uh, can you turn off your uh, camera my, my internet you know is really bad right now it's, uh, oh, it would okay. be a, a huge help thank you so much yeah no yeah problem. all right but um well, you okay yeah well, in terms of that right you, there's a thin line that you know as uh, when they start uh, being harmful to other people that that's where the government should step in but um so the the real the 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 root the root uh, thing that we were talking about was that um was children being raised in in a in a family right and being forced or uh, being indoctrinated right so that, that there's no physical harm there but there but there is infringement on their and their freedom of what they could uh, or believe but for them by themselves so in this case um so the the real question is should the government be the author main authority in what on 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 the children's free uh free what children should believe or is it should, should it still stay in the family and you know, let the parents do uh, f you know, the, teach the child what they want the child to believe. Uh, you broke up a little bit, so I'm gonna take a guess here that, um, yeah, you know, you it's 
it can be related to that whole box thing that we're just talking about. You know, if you're inside of a box and you had all of your needs met, uh, do you have well-being? And in the this case, you know, these kids, they don't have a choice. They don't get the choice to think, you know, to freely think because they may have a parent that believes some batshit crazy things and um, it's just getting passed down and I think that's uh, where education you know if uh, we have socialized education then uh, it has the chance that critical thinking can be uh, influenced to the person and when the kid grows up they have a chance to decide whether they're in a box or they're out in the real world so in yeah so in this case so what, what you mean but because you know of our limited resources for now you know just leave the children in the hands of their parents uh, but when they do, do grow up and have the capability to learn with, with socialized education then they can decide for themselves Right? Is that what you mean? You know, like here in Texas, in my state, uh, there's not a whole lot of criteria that has to be met for a parent to homeschool their children. So you do get these people who are, they just raise their kids, you know, with the Bible. And the Bible is like the big textbook. It's what is studied in all the other uh all the rest of the curriculum is kind of bypassed in a way is not seen as important uh which that you know that can be harmful but still the kid will grow up and they uh at least when they grow up they can have the opportunity to meet people who think contrary to their thoughts and Um, show them hey you're this is uh you're you're not the uh uh, you know yeah how how you think is not how everybody else thinks yeah and uh well i want to dive more into also uh, into your artistic side right um we we was I guess I've sort of have a good understanding of what you are as an atheist, right? But in terms of your artist side, why do you, do, uh, did you decide to be an artist? Uh, it's probably, of course, you know, because of your in, ingrained talent uh, in music and everything. But um, so what it, does it mean to be an artist and uh, what's your goal in it? It's, it's really quite selfish in a way. Um there's challenges with art um and whenever i i go to make a piece it's to challenge myself and to see how how well i can achieve what i think should be on that canvas or whatever medium that i'm working with so it's really art is me playing around with some kind of concept and trying to challenge myself to meet a goal. Also, um, what is this goal usually? Um, Is it more of like just a personal one or maybe you're like trying to make music to change the world? Well, which uh, side of the spectrum is it? But the the concepts, um, okay, like uh, like with visual arts, I could be like uh, the challenge is to use the Fibonacci code in order to make a design and to uh, to my best ability perfectly uh, use that uh, equation in order to make the picture. Um, With my music, it is very much 
the same. Uh, there are patterns inside of the guitar, and uh, I I choose a pattern, and then the goal is to try to you know stick with that pattern and or doing the opposite there's there's different ways you can flip it and, and to make the challenges it, especially whenever it comes to music there is uh a, there's a huge amount of patterns in which you can develop it to to make different sounds uh with my music though there is a message and it is about uh you know it is my philosophy it is these are uh this is how i think and i want to share it with other people um the messages are um i would think um of substance you know there's it's not just uh drug sex and rock and roll you know or uh slanging and banging you know it's th there's um a concept that i uh am looking at here let me let me look at what I, let me go here and then i can bring up an exact example here like my my new album that I, i'm working out right now um is called truth claims and I've made 12 songs, and each one of those songs is a truth claim. So um, that was my goal with this group of songs, was to, uh, to make a truth claim and to convey that message. Um, like uh, the sec... Uh, the second song that I put out called No Certainty, there's no, uh, what I think is true is that no one knows what happens after uh, life here on earth. There's no one out there. No one knows. And that to me is a truth. Mm-hmm. I see. And uh, well, uh, I just want one last question, man, because, you know, it's been a great talking to you and, uh, you know, diving into all of this. But uh, in, in the end, right, um, you, you, you are, you mentioned at the start that as an atheist, you are in, op you would lo love to oppose the, uh, you know, the dominant Christian or you know, Bible believing force in America. So, uh, can you tell me eventually, like, uh, what direction or what's your vision? Uh, if you do achieve this goal, you know, maybe in in support of other people like you in America, can you tell me what kind of America you are you are after? An all inclusive America, where it doesn't matter what you believe uh as far as like religion goes you know that that everybody has the freedom to think like how they want to um i would not want to see punishment for thoughts um i would like to see uh what i'm i'm doing to help promote this is uh i do make donations to freedom from religion foundation as well as the aca um i'm also patrons of uh different atheist content creators um to help uh promote these ideas i would just like to see a more inclusive and a more considerate america like uh, to me I i'm in america and the reason why it's useful to have you know this label i'm in america i'm down here in texas you're over there in the philippines but you know what we're still on the same earth like 
uh, American exceptionalism is something that I think needs to go to the wayside. We need to start thinking as a whole. I, I would, I would like to see our government working with other governments in collaboration and working together. I would like to see the world coming together and working together to fix the issues that are just just horrible there there are some things that are going on that are just completely uh disgusting and, and it, it makes me feel sad it, it, it makes me angry and it makes me feel very freaking small because i want to do something about it but i don't have the capability to go and go fight that fight but um I would like to see us all come together and work together as a team to be able to achieve well-being for everybody and everything. Awesome, man. And well, uh, that's that's the show, Tobin. Is there anything else that you want to uh, pr promote? I would love maybe people want to see more of your stuff online. Yeah, um, YouTube. Uh, that. I pay attention to my YouTube channel the most. If someone was wanting to uh, to get in contact with me, probably just going to my YouTube channel and going to my comment section is probably one of the quickest ways that I will notice. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter and all that, but uh, I enjoy YouTube the most. Um, it's where I put the majority of my content on there. Please come and listen. Take some time to just sit back and, and relax and enjoy some music. Uh, at this point, they're, they're just songs that I'm playing on my acoustic. And it's just my acoustic and my voice. Uh, but I'm just releasing all the ideas. And then uh, once I put out the 12th song, I will start re-recording the songs but doing it in a much cleaner fashion uh having the guitars mic'd up and uh my partner i have a bass player that works with me and they will be joining in the recording and i'll be adding drums i've been uh talking with other people in my online community uh i know a harmonica person i i know somebody who is uh it plays I, I know some people who play some instruments and i'm really excited to see who i can get to uh join and be a guest on the album i would I, just please come and uh hang out with me and and um and listen to some music Awesome. All right, Tobin. Well, uh, you know, your vision of, 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 of a united earth is something that we can all agree on. And uh, hopefully you can come on the podcast sometime again, man. And uh, well, it's been awesome. Have a great day, Tobin. All right. Likewise. Thank you for inviting me right. anytime. So that's the end of it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is your host, Elmo Ador Jr. And Thank you for listening in and please subscribe. Please follow us on Facebook. Please, please follow this. Please. Thanks. University of Maryland Global Campus has more than 20 years experience providing affordable online education to military service members and working adults. Offering low tuition, no cost digital resources replacing most textbooks, scholarships for those who qualify and more. Learn more at umgc.edu slash podcast. If you're a movie collector, you need Movies Anywhere. It pulls your favorite purchase movies from participating digital retailers into one central place so you can finally say goodbye to scattered movie collections and hello to an organized library. With Movies Anywhere, you can watch your favorite movies on any compatible device whenever and wherever you want. Ready to grow and enjoy your digital collection? Visit moviesanywhere.com slash welcome and register for free. Registration with Movies Anywhere required. Open to U.S. residents 13 and over.